it's recording. <clears throat> so I'm back on. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, on YouTube, I had to just recharge the battery. The next topic is number six on this guy's list. And again, for people that are watching me live on Facebook, don't be um, don't be afraid to like put in some questions. Canon has put. Um, Lucky for me, I can eat anything, but I would. Oh, bro. Do you know do you know what's crazy about doing this live like this multifunctional like feed and I'm pissed. I'm already fucked up about the way I'm fucking slurry like a motherfucker. Is that it's really cool that I've got like FB Live running because the guys on FB Live uh are bringing up topics that I I will really get enthusiastic about about talking. Um Canon from London has put I would touch oysters. I was the freaking same when I came to Japan. Hiroshima bro in Miyajima area um they have fresh oysters. Me and my wife and the family we went to Hiroshima I think it was I think it was yeah it was in February or March time I'd actually originally gone to Hiroshima I think it was like six years ago in the Miyajima area Hiroshima and around those areas there's many islands and stuff like that and they have like these fresh oyster like cultivation areas in the in the sea Canon I am not bro oysters I'm not talking about like the fucking this shit with lemon and stuff, but you can get that. I'm talking about like teppanyaki style where it's like they put the oysters on a hot plate and it's fresh and it, you have like salt and, and like um, lemon juice on it, man. And bro, I know uh, you, you, you hate oysters. I know, but like, I was exactly the fucking same. Trust me. And then I tried it and I was like, I was just like, oh, do you know what? Like, this is dope. I I don't think I could eat like f raw oysters. But again, I'm open to anything. I, I would try, I'd definitely try it next time I, I visit Kansai. But when you go to an area where food is produced locally and it's fresh and organic it's it's not like frozen oysters are made i don't know if you can, i don't know if you can get frozen oysters but i'm saying it's like fish and chips like where i live in in the uk fish and chips the fish is caught like in the morning it gets to the fish and chip shop it's the most amazing fish and chips you'll eat I'm sorry canon but in London, bruh, the time the fish gets to that chip shop, it's probably already gone off kind of shit, you know. <laughs> Where I live in England, the fish is fresh, man. It's like, I, I live like 10 minutes walk away from the sea. Um, Dave, is, but I had some, excuse me, market raw. Oh, was it any good, Dave? Again, Skiji Market's like the biggest fish. Um, like it's like the the Wall Street of fish commerce is Skiji Market. But yeah, man, Japan, it's Japan canon. Like even today, you saw if you guys watched my um Kappa Sushi video, the fish today was really like really good, like really soft, really smooth. People are like. Oh, I don't want to eat raw sushi fish and it smells. Actually, fresh fish that is cut, it doesn't smell at all. It's Japan, man. It's one of the best countries in the world for, for fish food. But anyway, number six is a long fucking topic. And number seven, this video could be like fucking lord of the rings some shit and i need to get my other fucking battery for my other yeah i've got it um 
God forbid you own a king size bed or large American style furniture. Oh man, right? So we in the so I lived in Japan for twelve years. We bought this house three years ago. And I'm talking, we've bought a house and we ordered shit from uh, Ikea. We ordered a kit. We ordered the the bed that we've got now, I think is a queen size. But we ordered, we ordered a king size. And when uh, Ikea came, they were like, we can't get it in your house because of how. So my, our front room and kitchen, it's an open planned area. It's. It doesn't have any doors, like double glaze, like doors that open up. So that even even getting the mat, IKEA came to our house and they were like, "Nah, that's not even gonna get even through your front door." And this is why, oh god, this is like we're divulging into like loads of like mad shit here. So IKEA were like, "Yeah, we can't do it, but you can order this." double like or queen size mattress a lot of products that were sold from well don't even get me started with costco but like with ikea japan is that the whole company in japan ikea they actually had to change i think a lot of the fucking sizes of stuff because None of the none of their products would actually fit into a Japanese house, um, and even now, some of their products will still not even fit in our house now. Again, I own a house. Well, well you know, I'm paying a mortgage, but yeah, it's it's not easy because our back window. It's a, it's a huge fucking window pane, and you, and all the door and how our house is built. It's really difficult to like get things upstairs into our house. Like we, it's big. It's it's bigger than like a normal regular like apartment. But I'm saying, they actually have companies in Japan. Are you listening to this guys on um on Facebook? Is they actually have IKEA actually have special companies that will come out and fucking use cranes to put fucking mattresses in your house bro it's bonkers because if you're on a second level the staircase that we have here is so like narrow and small it's they have to like get special equipment in and lift your fucking bed mattress in there. Flat pack is not a problem because you can, you know, it's flat pack. You can put it in your house and you can build it. You know, you take all your boxes up there. But fridges, we bought a new fridge. Um, it was a, our fridge now is a Hitachi. And I think the, the original fridge we bought we ordered it and the guys were like have you measured like the the door panes the door like the corridor and we're like yeah yeah the guy's like ah I, I don't think it's gonna fit into your house so we bought it anyway and the the real the cool guys that came to like install the fridge or deliver it i am not fucking joking you guys it was literally I'm talking like an inch to two inch. They couldn't fit it through the fucking door. Canon, Ikea stuff is trash. I, I I don't have the funds to buy like real wood furniture, but like in Japan, we have another company called Nitori. And Nitori is like the the equivalent of uh, of ikea but nitori do way better quality products and actually um nitori even though it's flat pack they come to your house and they actually fucking build the shit there 
So it's like ordering a bookshelf. They'll they'll come and install it for you. You don't have to fuck around with those stupid IKEA Allen keys and little shitty screwdrivers, all that crap. They come in, it's flat packed, they'll fucking build it inside your house. You want a cup of tea, lads? <laughs> this kind of thing, you know, it, it's awesome. Nitori is an awesome company and we ordered our our kitchen like unit thing for like storage and storing fucking you know plates cups all that crap Nitori Japan awesome company makes IKEA look like a bunch of clowns to be fair and it's a way better product even though it is like MDF chipboard all that crap but the build quality all my ikea stuff that i've bought bro is is broken and fucked so ikea sorry but some of ikea stuff is is cool though. like furnishings not like stands and shit like that I, I i don't rate it i'm sorry to say that ikea if you're watching um right back to the comments we're divulging again this is going to be a five hour video um this guy on the last comment put uh or a large american style food you'll probably have to sell it we live in a tiny 750 square foot apartment my closet is too small but on the bright side i purge my wardrobe about four times a year and I've converted to space saving hangers. I share a bathroom with my husband and while our kitchen is very small and narrow, don't get me started with that. Uh, and this is a good topic actually. It's a beautiful kitchen and I've grown used to it, but we have to use our dishwasher for storage. What the fuck? Wait, you have a dish? You have a dishwasher, bro. Are we the dishwasher? So I haven't used a dishwasher in over three years and I like to cook a lot. Plus our energy efficient washing machine takes five hours to wash and dry a full load of laundry. Honestly guys, this guy is talking absolute bullshit. Like seriously. Um, I like to think I'm helping out the environment but once again, Japan teaches you patience. With that said, I really like the simpler life now, but I could still really use a bigger closet. Ah, uh, fucking hell, right? I did my fucking TMD business, guys that are watching, from a 1K apartment, or a 1LK apartment, I think it would be. And it got to the point where I was actually running out of space. I had to stock many of my stock outside. You, Caddy, was going mad. We had May. She was a baby at that time. I managed to live in a fucking hamster cage for like four years. No problem. Um, the first place that I worked, that I lived in, I remember I was in a, a shared house. I was in Yokohama. I mentioned this in the video. This is a thing about Japanese apartments. One is um, some apartments only have one hob. So that means if you're cooking, oh man, <laughs> fuck it up. If you're cooking pasta, right? If you're cooking pasta, you know, unless you make your, your, your spaghetti bolognese, like your beef and your tomatoes, like shit first. You can possibly warm that up in a microwave later, which isn't a problem. But when I make bolognese, I normally have my bolognese on one hob. And then I start doing the pasta on another hob. Or I'm doing something else. Because some of these apartments, and by the way, some of these apartments have like these, um, they're like electric heaters. Um, and they're and they're, it's only one hob. So with my style of cooking, I need two hobs at minimum. 
you can't fucking do that. I remember in my first apartment, I was cutting fucking carrots and potatoes in the fucking sink for brushing your teeth. There was no room. Like, I'm talking... You've just got a cooker, like a little electric hob. Like they, they have like portable gas hubs that like just are just one like unit. But you can't really. You have to like fucking balance the what you're cooking, and it's like a thought process as well. It's like, what do I need to cook first? Let it cool off. Do this shit. Put that back on. Where do I put like the hot fucking thing? There's literally no room. You can't. It's basically self-containment in one apartment, one case shit. It's 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 actually you'd have more space in a fucking prison cell than like a fucking Japanese apartment. And some areas charge like through the nose for this shit. You know, it's definitely not worth the money. And I I've I've known one guy from Canada. He lived in this apartment. It was my first experience of like visiting somebody who lived in this like 1K. 1K means one room, one kitchen. And it's basically, he lived in Tokyo. Yo, 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 I'm a rich man. Look at me, I'm rich man. I'm cool, motherfucker, yo. Some of these places have coin laundry. So you can't, they don't have washing machines in the apartment. You can't just say, Oh, I want to wash this, like, T-shirt tonight, or this hoodie. It's a communal washing machine, what's outside, because they can't store it inside, it's so small. Two is, if I put my arms apart, and a little bit more, I would touch both walls. You have no room for storage. I'm talking about insanely small apartments, which actually in Japan is big business right now, because where I live, We've got new, we've got a new a mansion being built, which is 1K. There's another one behind me. It's Japanese style living. It's fucking nuts. It's not fun. Like, if you're a model builder, Eli's just put this in. Good luck with that. The, the This is why, again, a lot of like foreigners out there are like, why, why are Bandai Star Wars kits so small? And because these kits are made for like Japanese, like you know, style life. It's like, why is it built in like one six? Or like, well, Japanese apartments are so small they can't display it. So in Japan, they like to have gachapon toys, small things. Small Kit Kats, even you know, weird shit like that. Everything's smaller. Everything's like condensed, reduced in size because it's Japan. This isn't America. This isn't England. Uh, even my house right now, compared to an American house, you know, I have people. Like, oh, Darren, you know, your house is so expensive. Like in America, in America, like we. I'm like, yeah, but mate, I don't live in America. And like, this is Japan. Like, this is how it is. Like, I can't, you know, I'm, I've bought a house, which buying a house here in general is like a big step up. Because one of my old um, apartments, my last apartment, which is, I really love, by the way, like this room right now would be fucking huge. And it's not that big. These guys have seen my man cave. What is 1KL? It's kitchen, living room. It kind of goes like this. It's called like 2LDK. Two means two rooms, dining room, kitchen, living room. 1K is like one room, one kitchen. Does that make sense? But my last apartment was really good because it was like a studio apartment. So it was bigger than a regular 1K. 1K is basically, and I'm no joke, it's smaller than a prison cell. And to make matters worse, the fucking bathroom 
you have a shower and a toilet in the room same room and it's it has a wet like a wet room like floor so like when you have a shower all the water dissipates through the the flooring which is another great japanese invention as well i'm not saying they, they invented wet floor uh, flooring but i'm saying they've managed to work out like how they can maximize the space michael yeah and uh, eli you don't have to tell me that man yeah you live in america bro like you, you if you ever visit japan one day bro like you you would have You'd probably have a heart attack seeing how people live out here, bro. And the price as well. Rent here is fucking nuts. And, like, space is basically nothing. Even out of my house, which I'm proud to own, proud to live in, Comparing this to a, a British house is small, but we're comfortable. Like I'm happy with it, you know. Um, this guy's got a dishwasher. Dishwashers in Japan normally, um, they're not in built into the kitchen. You can buy dishwashers that are like kind of like uh, mobile units. So I don't know what this guy is talking about because when we moved here, one of the first things we told the architect was Darren wants a gas oven. Ovens in Japan are a rare thing. I am so fucking lucky to get a, a gas oven and they cost $3,000 <clears> to install. $3,000 for just installing a gas oven. I'm I'm not talking about the hub. I'm talking the fucking gas oven because gas out here is not popular because of earthquakes and shit. I prefer gas because, um, well, I just love gas. It's just better to cook roast food. In. You can get microwaves that you can make a fucking cook a, a, a cake or you can do all kinds of shit in a microwave but for me i like having gas gas for me is way forward and you can do loads of cool shit with gas but it costs a hell of a lot of money it costs a lot of money we don't have a we don't have a dishwasher in a I just use manpower for that, but this guy's comment on six, number six here, is a bit weird. Simpler life, yeah, I can, I can, I can agree with that. You know, the the more space you have, the more shit that you accrued, you know, after time. And it's like even when we moved into here it was amazing how much shit was moved into here from my old apartment which was a small apartment you guys like you're gonna have the man cave and this is all your crap which it is and i've still got crap upstairs which is kind of weird because i live in a big house i say big house but like all the crap that i have is taken up nearly two rooms so i managed to put a shitload of stuff that I had from my old apartment into like two huge rooms, which is bigger than my old apartment. It's hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. Um, another problem that we have in Japan, and this will be my last topic because I'm getting fucked up right now and chew. It's kicking in, guys. I'm talking bollocks. Is that with Japanese rental system it's really weird because like many places if you're foreign they won't take you on as a foreigner even if they do there's a lot of paperwork and a, a, a guy that actually a guy that I'm following now is a Japanese guy talking about shit he hates about living in Japan and lo and behold, one of his things that he's mentioned is actually um, about Japanese paperwork. 
So when you move to a Japanese apartment, you need a guarantor. Guarantors in the UK are a bit different because you can just put down like your mum, your parents' name or whatever, close relative. Out here, you do that, but it needs to be done through like a fucking official process of where you need documents to like have your like for example your your dad right in england you just put your dad's name his address his email out here it's documents like they car it's really fucking strict bro and how they how the the companies make money here is that every two years you have to sign what's called uh like a you have to re-sign the contract. And what happens is, although the lease, sorry, it's like on the last month of your lease and you want to continue, it's called it's called gift money. And you guys out there watch, you'll be fucking bl mind blown by this. So imagine, let me, let me use dollars as an example, right? So imagine if your rent is a thousand dollars a month you have a two-year contract you fucking it comes to the end of the contract the landlord's like right what do you want to do oh i want to renew another two years you have to fucking pay double up fucking fees on the next contract so like what, what are we in now it's fucking october right so let's say my contract ends november I want to re-sign a two-year lease on the contract beginning from November. The lease runs out in October, Eli. You have to pay 2,000 yen in November. On top of that monthly fucking rent as well. It's fucking bullshit. Ten things I hate about Japan, you fucking scumbags. It, that shit really pisses me off. And what makes it worse is, it's like, these fucking letting agents are already creaming enough money, like the land is paid, the fucking property is paid for. That fucking mysterious quote-unquote gift money, which I don't know how to say it in Japanese, you have to pay for. 20 bucks, no way, bro. Bro. So your rent is, okay, let's say, for example, it's, my my last rent was like 70,000 yen. That's $7,000, right? Is that right? Let, let me do some calculations here, YouTubers. Yen to US dollar. Right, okay, that's 70,000. Yeah. That's six hundred and six hundred and sixty-two dollars times two. Because it it's at the end of the contract. You have to pay double. And to make matters worse, you fucking have to pay uh because you know let's say for example you're a foreigner coming to Japan, you need a guarantor. Some foreigners can't get these guarantors because you're not, like, related to any... I was lucky in my case because my old boss did it for me. If you can't find a guarantor, you have to pay another maybe $500 as your guarantor, as a third-party company. So if you fuck up the apartment, that private firm... You have to pay them money and on top of the fee that you're paying them yearly. It's a real fucking bullshit system, bro. And on top of that, no, I need a piss. Um, hey, what's up, guys, YouTubers? I've just had a piss break. I'm just getting back to the comments. Eli is put, um, it's called a co, is it a co-signer? Yeah. Um... It's been a long time since I rented any apartments from the UK, but how it works in England is, this is when I was a student, was that you would sign a contract, give 
two like references that would be your parents right or somebody else they act as guarantors you pay a bond money james bond and if the apartment gets fucked up in that time you you lose the bond which is about well i'm i'm eli i'm going back to when i graduated in you know it was like 2001 2004 read that era um in england bond money will be gone like you'll fucking lose that shit anyway because the landlord could say all kinds of mad thing about your fucking apartment it that money's gone but at least like in england when you sign like i don't know if it's changed right now either it's like if you sign in a like this is going back then in my time was like you signed a contract and you would have that apartment forever till you gave up it right you have to give like a month's notice um if you lived in an apartment for seven fucking years and you paid like 150 quid i'm going back like in 2001 that's gone because you've lived in there so long, of course there will be damage. It's not going to be like Buckingham fucking Palace in there, you know. Going into the comments, right? Uh, we've got Phil. Alan, what's up, Philip? Narrow boats are now used as tourist vessels now, but in the olden days, they used to ferry goods on canals in Britain between major cities. Um, before the railways took over, look up the Leeds Liverpool Canal. This might give more info if you want to know more. I live in a town that it, it passed through called Sk Bro, I know Skipton, man. I'm from Filey near Scarborough, bro. Like, it's about a fucking 45 minute trip there. Um, and you can hire these for days on weeks, like, a, like an RV on water. All right, man. So, like I said, I'm trying to help people save money out there. Phil Allen's just made a really good comment. Michael's putting, been watching Cruising the Cut. Yeah, the, there are a lot of people out there. You know, you had the whole fucking man in a van thing. <sighs> Do you know what? Even before I met you, Kate, my wife. God bless her. She's, she's in bed right now. She's probably listening to my bullshit on YouTube, but... That fucking one man in a van stuff is really interesting. Um, some of those conversions that I've seen people do are truly breathtaking. Like, and I'm all I'm all for people trying to like fuck the big brother system and like like this is how you should live your life and you know you be tied down to crap. I'm all for it, but. In hindsight, it's like me, I, I think it's a great idea. In Japan, it would never work. Never work, sadly. I don't know what the legalities are on, like, randomly parking up in fucking car parks and living there. Um, I think the governments are like, and this is a problem with YouTube in itself. It's like, um, people have found ways to escape tax. <laughs> and people you know the governments around the world they don't want people to be free anymore right they want people to be paying money somewhat it they've devised every kind of aspect every loophole everything to like try to make people repressed into like well you you know you can't live in a van you can't live like just like off the grid, all that bullshit. And it, and it honestly is kind of sickening, man. Like so, like the big boom with that was like uh, I know a lot of American um, YouTubers that I used to follow were into all that stuff. Um, would it work in Japan? I don't think it would, man. I don't think there are laws out here. That, well, you can't even park your fucking car. That's 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 the main thing. 
in England, it's like, oh, we're going to sleep here for the night. Sleep in this car park in Japan. It's, it ain't going to happen, man. Um, should we do the last one? Because I'm getting really fucking messy right now and I'm talking bullshit. Um, the last one is... I'm on number seven, so there's three more in this series. And I think this video that I'm going to put out tomorrow will be a good amount of ammunition to put out there for, for you guys to watch this. I mean, you guys, I mean, when I do these FB lives, I'm not sure if the guys want to re-watch this, but like, I lose subscribers just doing these FB lives because these guys are probably not going to watch it. You know what I mean? The last one is seven. No trash cans anywhere. This is one of my biggest fucking bugbears in this country. And this is a this is a very weird and surreal situation, but I'll get into it. Finding a trash can around the city to throw away an empty coffee cup or a bag of dog poop can make you call, uh, curse up a storm. I've held on to coffee cups for up to half an hour before. And because of the lack of trash cans, you're expected to take your little friend's poop back to your apartment and flush it down your own toilet. I'm not joking. I think this guy or person that's written this mad shit is basically somebody that's moved to Japan on the latter end of 2000, maybe 2006. To, uh, 2016 I don't want to get too much involved in this is my last topic I want to talk about tonight um, this is based on a few reasons one is and I, I forgot the guy's name in I think it was in the early 90s I think there is a Japanese cult and I, I don't know the specific details if I can tomorrow I'll put the link in the description and, and talk about it. But there is a cult in Japan, which I think is still active, but it's it's on its last legs. There was a Japanese guy, and I think he took lots of LSD, who claimed he was the Jesus of Japan or of the world. And there is a station that I, tr I used to travel daily on, which is called... Kasumi Magasi, which is on the Joban line, Tokyo Metro. There was a big rising chemical uh, attack, terrorist attack, which this guy was a cult leader. And I think, oh God, I need to catch up on this case. I don't know if he's getting a death sentence or not. By the way, Japan, we still have death sentences here. But what happened was this guy had basically brainwashed a lot of people into this really weird cult thing um i'll tell you what let me try and find it right now uh okay let me try and find it oh uh, Okay, wait a minute. I'm trying to find this up, man. Japanese. Rice. I don't even know how to spell right. Right. Oh, I, I need to research this in my own time. Um, cult. Japanese cult leader. It's kind of interesting as well. I uh, found it, right, okay, the guy is called um, Shoko Asahara, this guy, and they are part of, <laughs> Elf, Elif, I don't know, wait a minute, Shogo, Shoko Asahara born, Chizuo Matsumoto was a Japanese cult leader and the founder of the Japanese Doomsday cult called 
Aung Shin Riko. Asahara was convicted of masterminding the deadly 1995, oh, sorry, 1995 okay, a siren gas attack on the Tokyo subway and was involved in several other crimes. He was sent, oh shit, yeah, he's been sent to death. That's fucking mad. Um, he was sentenced to death, I think, in 2014. Is that right? No. Oh, he was executed by hanging on July 6th. Thanks, Michael, for that info. On in 2018, when I, when I edit this video on YouTube, guys, I'll I'll put a, a picture in. Michael, thanks for that, man. Michael's on it already. Michael, you should be my like sub co-host on this. Um, there's quite a lot of information about this, but I, I'll read it out to you guys anyway. You know, in 1984. Asahara formed Aum Shinsen no Kai. He changed his name from Chizuo Masamoto to Shoko Asahara and renamed his group Aum um Shinriko in 1987. Asahara applied for the government registration and all the authorities were initially reluctant after an appeal the Tokyo Metropolitan Government eventually granted it uh, Wow, I didn't even know this uh, Eventually granted it legal recognition as a religious corporation in 1989 <laughs> Wow, I mean You know Since Michael and all the guys on FB um, Since I've got into this whole YouTube thing now into more like in depth I'm actually finding out more stuff. I'm learning more stuff about what's going on. It's really bizarre because I've been here 12 years I knew about this guy But I didn't really know the full like kind of details about it And I didn't even know that the Japanese government actually legislated this this religion as an actual it's like saying Oh, yeah, I want to make like the, the like the, you know, I want to be a Jedi. The Japanese, go, yeah, okay, you can be a Jedi. You can go around using fucking mind tricks and all that weird shit, you know. Jump around with lightsabers and crap like that. Yeah, do it. <laughs> the Japanese government gave it a fucking green light. After this, uh, a monastic order was established and many lay followers joined. Asahara gained credibility by appearing on TV and on magazine covers. He gradually attained a following of believers and began um, uh, invited to lecture meetings at universities. Asahara also wrote several religious books including Beyond Life and Death and Supreme Initiation. The doctrine of Um Shin Riko is based on the Vera, was it Varajana sculptures, the Bible, and other texts. In 1992, Asahara published Declaring Myself the Christ, uh, which I did mention before, within which he declared himself himself Christ. Like he he thought he was like Jesus. Like the guy's a fucking nutcase. I, I like I said, the guy's on fucking M MDMA or some fucking LSD or DMT. Fucking nut job. Japan's only fully enlightened master and identified with the Lamb of God, who are a fucking metal band, by the way. Uh, Michael's put as of March 2020, his ashes were still at the Tokyo Detention Center. Family deep. Shit, man. The doctrine of um, Shinriko is based. Oh, no, I've that. Sorry. His uh, permitted mission was to take others' sins upon himself, and he claimed he could transfer spiritual power to his followers. He saw dark conspiracies everywhere, promulgated by the Jews, the Freemasons, okay, the Dutch, the British royal family, bro, 
get Michael, get on fucking Wikipedia. Have you read that shit about this crap, man? This is fucking nuts. And rival Japanese religions. This is nuts, man. Um, he outlined doomsday prophecy, prophecy, sorry, which included Third World War and described the final conflict culminating into in a nuclear Armageddon borrowing the term from the book of Revelation 16.16. Azahara often preached the necessity of Armageddon for human relief. He eventually declared put Tantra, I can't even say that, I'm fucking pissed on fucking Chuai, but it says put Tantra Varajana into practice in accordance with the doctrines of the Mahamudra and he led a series of terrorist attacks using a secret organization hidden from ordinary believers. That's pretty fucking deep shit, man. Um, I'll talk about quickly the the actual attacks, and I think Michael on FB Live has talked about his death. The Tokyo subway gas attacks and arrest. I think this was like publicized all over the world news. I remember it kind of. On March 20th, 1995, members of the Um Shinriko attacked the Tokyo subway with nerve gas, nerve agent siren. 13 people died and thousand more suffered ill effects. That could have been me if it was now because I used to travel for that line on uh, two years. After finding sufficient evidence, authorities accused Um Sinrico of complicity in the attack as well as in a number of smaller scale incidents. Dozens of disciples were less, uh, arrested. Um's facilities were raided and the court issued an order for Asahara, uh, Asahara's arrest. On May 16, 1995, the police investigated the Um Shinriko. Asahara was discovered in a very small, isolated room in one of the facilities. Uh, wary of possible Um military power, the first airborne brigade of the Japan. Ground self-defense force was stationed nearby to support the police if needed. That's fucking mad. Do you know what, right? I knew about this kind of when I came here, but I never really read Wikipedia. I never really got into, like, the whole research of this. It's pretty fucking weird. And the only information why this has triggered me slightly is Michael be like David Icke, right? But I don't think David Icke goes around like fucking poisoning people and killing people. But in Japan, I saw maybe two or three news reports about the the cult group, what they're called. Um, what they're called. Uh, Shin, Shinriko, or whatever it's called. Like, apparently, some of these guys, or women even, they wear like white t-shirts, a bit like Mormons and shit like that. And they're I think they're kind of still around, but like these members that were part of this cult are actually um still around, I think, because like through intelligence the cops have arrested like quite a lot of people still connected to this mad shit. So it's like this shit is not, it's not finished, by all means. I'm sure there are still underground networks of these um, um Shinrikos going around, but they're not like keep like they're not like putting themselves out there. Um, quickly before I go, hey Michael, you just brought up a massive storm, man. I think, yeah, like I said, I think he had, I've, I've actually seen media footage of it, I hope, man, like I said, I've done this video for YouTube, so I can edit some stuff, if I can find the news report, which I've seen many a fucking times on YouTube, I remember it, 
because it's the station that I used to work in Tokyo, right? And this particular stop is it's un, it's in the underground, and it was a connection train to the Hibiya Sen going out to Hiro. Um, I could have taken two lines. One is Hibiya. Chiyorasen and one is Kasumi Magasi Chiyorasen and I would alternate between those two stops it doesn't matter which stop I got off because it would it would still mean me travelling the same train on those connections that's why I know a lot about this case because it's a train that I took for like over a year uh, Michael's put the Japanese Defence Force didn't know he had explosives or more uh, siren. Um, this is why, and we're going back onto fucking the original topic about like, why can't I throw my like tin cans away? It's because in Japan they removed all their fucking trash bins or garbage bins or rubbish bins. Because of the threat of this fucking cult, that's why it all happened. When I came to Japan for the first four or five years, they used to have these like plastic bins everywhere, which were mainly outside convenience stores, which they now have moved indoors. But what that guy's saying is true. Like, you can't. Japan is a clean country, which is weird, right? Because you think that. Okay, there are no, there are no trash bins anywhere in this country, but yet the country is so clean. Like you won't even find a sweet wrap on the road. It's because the Japanese are very courteous and like they, they don't like, quote unquote, shit in their backyard. Um, but I think one of the main reasons was because of this fucking nut job case. Uh, he was a threat to the government, the threat to um, the, uh, the the people. The line that he chose to do this writing attack is actually one of the busiest train lines from where I live into Tokyo. Um, my train line runs, I think that line can run up to two and a half hours. So you can only imagine that if, imagine if he targeted all the underground networks on that, on my train line, which is the, the Chioda Sen, the Chioda line. It's kind of hard to explain about train lines in Japan, but... We have train lines, like Tokyo areas that are underground. Um, there are two different companies. One is Japanese Rail, which is the biggest company, one of the biggest companies in Japan. And one is Tokyo Metro. Now, Tokyo Metro is... Oh, I don't, oh God, how do I explain this? They rent the fucking train line from JR. JR own the train. They actually own the line, but it gets to a certain position in Tokyo where it's like, this is our patch. You have to pay us money for that. So the only profits that are made... Oh, man. I, you, you guys watching me on Facebook, mate probably understand this better but like I've got a piece of paper here right you guys can see that let's call it like A and B so this is like basically JR own all this shit but they don't want to take the full responsibility of owning everything so what they do is is that certain train companies they have trains that rent lines from JR. Does that make fucking sense to you guys? It is weird to understand because it took me quite a long time to like grasp that. I was like, what? So like all those trains in Japan, like in England, it's British Rail. We have Virgin trains, of course, but 
it's all about um, who owns the train lines. Before I get off, uh, I will get into the last topic. And this isn't off the top 10 list, by the way. This is about train lines because in Japan, certain companies back in the like 70s um, had land ownership of areas maybe that owned land they built train lines on and it wasn't like base oh my facebook live has gone off god damn so there were certain areas that jr couldn't buy at that time and we have smaller independent train line companies that still run like the hawks line that is one of the most expensive train lines in Japan is that those companies will JR Japanese real big company um, are trying to buy them out but these companies are like nah fuck you we're not selling to you guys but the people that live in those areas are pissed the fuck off about it because they're paying almost double or treble the amount of fees that JR are charging and it's like you are a small and I hate to say this because it's like I, I hate big companies bullying other smaller companies but in, in this respect it's like your train line company is fucking shit it's like you don't own nothing. You can't compete with the big boys. It's like some small burger chain trying to compete with McDonald's over like fucking location property. It's like, right, small burger chain have no fucking money. They have certain areas in that area where they own it. But you're trying to deal with a bigger company like McDonald's who want to buy you out and take over shit where let's get real here most people want to buy McDonald's over your burgers we can charge cheaper rates we have better service but you're serving shit burgers they're overpriced but you won't sell that land that's what it's like over here. There are certain train companies out there that still have certain areas of land that they won't sell. And unfortunately, it's the people that live in those areas that have to suffer that shit because even where I live, we have an area where JR and the people in my hometown we want an express line being built here, but the land that they need to buy, and it's a real tricky one, is that it's owned by a landowner who ha who rents allotments, people, old people that rent spaces for like growing vegetables and produce. And they even have like an organic farm. And it's so, oh, it's such a difficult one because I'm ca oh man, <coughs> I'm kind of like I'm man. I am a big organic gardener. I get it. I really fucking do. But then, like when I'm traveling, it's like I can't get to my station because the landowner who owns all this beautiful land won't sell it. And Jr. as typical like big corporate companies try and bully out these small people. It's one farmer that has gone like, fuck you. He's gone against public voting, which JR, Japanese Rail, have set up. They actually had uh, like uh, a committee, a questionnaire thing, like fucking let's, let's vote. Who wants to have this new train line put in? There was like 90% of people saying, yeah, we want it. But the landowner has gone like, I'm not selling it, man. This is my land. People grow vegetables here. 
tomatoes, herbs, fucking all kinds of shit, daikon, everything. And in some way, I respect the guy, the landowner, because he's probably been offered insane money, insane money for that land, but he won't give it up, or she. Massive fucking respect for you for doing that. And you know what? Like, I, I used to, I mean, I'm not bothered now because I don't work that way or catch the train that way because I, I catch different trains now. But good on you, man. Like, you've, a big company is trying to bully you all this time and you've said, no, I'm not selling this land for your little express fucking stop off train point. This is my land. These are my people that are renting uh, the land to make life cheaper in living they, you know, they grow their own vegetables fruits and whatever and he's going oh fuck you that doesn't happen a lot in today's world <sighs> so I'm pretty smashed guys I think I'm going to leave it at that I think I've covered many things tonight it's going to be like a two hour video maybe i'm gonna to have to edit tomorrow so it's getting late it's like 20 past one uh 20 it's well it's over midnight <laughs> so i'm gonna love you and leave you guys and thanks for watching and all the support all the comments and i hope i've answered all your queries and uh, i'll catch you on the next one